Pam, you lifted up the importance of uh, a congregation, a body of Christ supporting young people mm -hmm. by helping them to understand their telos mm -hmm. uh, and understand what we might call vocation in more technical mm -hmm. language, but purpose mm -hmm. in, in the language that mm -hmm. you thought would be more accessible. So a youth minister is watching and, and wants to know, well, what am I going to do this week that, that advances that? Mm -hmm. Can you come up with some concrete suggestions for the youth ministers who are joining us today? Sure. And I want to do that in three ways. Because I think um, I study youth development in secular and faith-based contexts. And one of the ways that I see congregations being such fertile ground for thriving, for generating purpose, for positive development, is somewhat threefold. And the church has an edge on this than other social institutions or organizations. But the church can provide coordinates, as I talked about earlier. Um, coordinates are necessary to locate oneself. So I gave the illustration of playing Battleship, you know, calling out I-9, J-8, trying to find the boat. Kids don't have very clear coordinates in our world today. There's so many narratives fighting for kids' attention, so many things saying follow me from Facebook to Instagram to whatever, um, that the church can be really explicit and clear about talking about the coordinates or the beliefs that we have, what our life is to be about. And so I think clear teaching about who Jesus was, stories in the Bible, is just really practical. And a lot of churches take that for granted. But the second thing churches can do is provide a social context um, for kids to work out these beliefs and to see them in action. So everything from surrounding kids with caring mutual relationships with adults, with solid peers, providing opportunities for kids to lead, whether it's in Sunday school with younger kids, whether it's visiting elderly, whether it's participating in session or the deacons or leading in worship, but giving kids actual experiences to try out their skills, to find what sticks, what's meaningful to them is really important. Um, mission trips, local service projects are great, um, but doing that in a trusting, safe environment is vital. And then I think the most unique thing the church has, and it's so funny because I think it's so undermined or undertapped into, is I'll call it transcendence. Not many other youth programs or options enable kids to be a part of something sacred and something so much bigger than themselves. And I think the church really underplays the profound sense of belonging that we have as a people of faith. Not just to our congregation, whether it's a mega church and super small or our local small church on the corner, but we are a part of all the Christian believers before us now and in the future. And I think actually creating rituals that enable kids to have a sense of the profound sense of belonging that they have is really powerful. I mean, the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, is something that we have been doing as Christians for millennium. But I feel like often we've taken that transcendent value out of it. It becomes just a rote practice. Um, but I think the church really needs to think about what are rituals that are meaningful and engaging for young people that can shape their identity um, and give them a sense of being a part of something bigger than themselves. I think technology is potentially a great resource for enabling kids to feel connected in a meaningful way. Um, I think participating together locally, um, we can make new rituals to have that sense of transcendence, but I would love to see kids have more of that. Because in youth development research, we actually know that it's transcendence that keeps kids committed to purpose and important things. When it is so much bigger than them, they stay engaged. And that's um, engagement and commitment are not long for our, in our culture right now. 